So here we are in the Lotus Room. This is the room that we use for Ayurveda classes, meditations, and we also rent it for spiritual groups and uh, healing trainings, things like that. Uh, we would not use this room for, like rent it for a birthday party or something like that. This is sort of, we're holding this as something like the spiritual center of the building and actually this historic part of the building, we're really, uh, focused more uh, as, a, as a healing center, a place for Ayurveda, uh, meditation, psychotherapy, things like that. And so I'm now going to show you the details of this particular uh, part of the remodel where we focused on a Panchakarma clinic and related things, including the store. So adjunct to the clinic, I've sold products through the clinic now for many years. Uh, I'm creating a product line company called Vibrant Lotus Products. And so we're going to do order fulfillment through the internet, but also have this storefront, which we're just putting together. And, and that's where we are now. Uh, this room, I don't know if there's a lot to say about uh, the remodel itself in terms of sustainability. Uh, the standard features that we've put throughout the building are here. The two, two different lighting systems, the corner treatments, the, the good base, the commercial carpet, the paint, and so on. Um, uh, the camera is in a historic doorway. We didn't move it. There is the cottage window, the larger cottage window. Um, but uh, this will be a, a great spot to have a little store. So I'm here in my clinic. Uh, this is the, the place where I work as an Ayurvedic practitioner. And I see clients here. And it was a great privilege actually to be able to design my own workspace. So we're up on the upstairs west side. And it, uh, when we first uh, got into this office, there was no insulation in the walls at all. And what we had was a regular gable uh, roof and what you can see is actually the original profile of the gable roof. It was a pretty small space. And then what we did is we created this uh, solar dormer, which I think is very successful. It opens up the space, uh, one objective. And the other is we get a lot of solar gain. There were essentially no, effectively no south facing windows when we started. And now the heat mirror windows on this side collect about 10% of the entire heat load for the building. And uh, with the correct uh, overhang, that passive solar system exceeds our expectations. Um, because we weren't sure how, how well we were going to do with that, uh, we actually put in, two, there are actually three different sources of heat in addition to the solar here. Um, we have two hydronic heating zones and as well the HVAC system. Uh, we added the extra hydronic heating zone because what we have over here is actually a four inch concrete slab. And what that does is it uh, improves the performance of the passive system by creating a, a significant suspended uh, heat mass. And it, I think it's quite effective. We even have the ability to cool it in the summer. We haven't had to do that. Uh, but just as a precaution, that is actually on its own hydronic uh, system. And then the HVAC is actually quite nice because in the summer, obviously, uh, it's nice to be able to cool the space on a really tough day. And uh, because the sun goes behind the mountains about three o'clock in the afternoon, it's sort of a sudden switch off situation. Uh, the temperature can drop very quickly or if we get wind, um, there were a lot of infiltration issues. I think we've addressed that. In the walls, the polyurethane, the blown polyurethane is a really good solution. And then of course we did back that with the visqueen, the, the plastic, uh, which protects the inhabitants from outgassing by the polyurethane. 
in, this, in the roof, we had to work hard to get a good R value because we're in a pretty small space. We had an existing two by four inch, actual two inches by four inches rafter system that had to be fortified with micro lamps. So we're looking at a little reflectix behind the, uh, behind the gypsum and then uh, we did add a little bit of uh, insulation board under the final roofing system. So it's a very compact and effective uh, roofing system here. So just pause for a moment in this hallway. I want to share a little bit about design. Uh, so what you see here are various elements that in a way are accidental part of the building, but we've allowed them to come forward and create a composition, something like a painting. So this uh, banister probably dates to 1897. We kept it. Uh, there's a part of the mechanical systems, which we treat kind of like a, a modern architect uh, style. Then we have some of the elements that we brought in to create this sort of sacred space, the geometric light fixtures, the treatment of the doors, uh, the, the large uh, baseboard, things like that. And so we end up with a, a designed composition. It has a little bit of a modern flavor, but this is, this is later than postmodernism. And the building itself being a, a sustainability oriented project where we're looking at materials and creating a certain experience. People talk about their experience a lot of coming in the building. They don't really know what the elements are, most of them. They just know it feels a certain way. And so this, uh, I'm going to call it post postmodern architecture. This is architecture for the 21st century. So we're just entering the 21st century. We're going to be in a century of climate change and a need to consider these sustainability elements in an effective and cost-effective way uh, that works. And there's still going to be a desire for a, a, a certain experience, a, a pleasant experience in the, in the built environment. So we're now in the upstairs east office, and this is a place where we do psychotherapy sessions, massage, panchakarma treatments, and uh, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's actually what you can't hear. It's very quiet. This is a protected space. It's away from the street. It's backed away from everything. So we actually have a soundproof door system that we added. Uh, we did a lot of soundproofing actually to isolate this room more than any other. Um, it's a smaller version actually of the, the office next door and we have uh, some daylighting going on. Uh, we've got the heat mirror windows, the, the hard coat low E, uh, excuse me, the hard coat low E window and then we've got the skylight that we added which uh, what we incorporate here is a, a tube, a shaft of light for uh, the downstairs area. Um, we're sort of capturing a, a non-usable section of the building because of the way that the uh, shed roof works to create that light well there. Um, it's a very successful room. So this is the bathroom between the two offices upstairs. Uh, the original bathroom was in this location. I think that's what the room was for in 1897, although I don't think they would have had a flush toilet, so I, I don't really understand. Um, maybe they just showered up here or something. Anyway, uh, we did everything we could to enlarge the size of the room as much as possible. Uh, we got a few inches. Um, and then of course, you know, new electrical and plumbing and all of that. We also oriented the fixtures a little differently. So now when you sit on the toilet, you're facing north, which is uh, second best option for Vastu Shastra. Uh, same thing with the sink. Um, experimented with this Sil Granite uh, bar sink and uh, it was so good. I actually ended up using that style uh, when I remodeled uh, our house. Um, kind of challenging to figure out how to put the fixtures in, had to do a custom mirror. And what we really worked for here was to create a very uh, hard surface, easily cleaned space because with Panchakarma, we work with a lot with oils and they're very messy. Uh, so you see a lot of tile and hard surfaces to make it easy to clean. Um, this, this room has its own heating zone. 
shared with the hall. Uh, I think it's quite successful, actually, and the, the tile is gorgeous.